Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. This is part three in our series on the history of the gyroplane. In this film we look at the changing fortunes of the gyroplane from its complete abandonment post the Second World War to absolute mania caused by a 1960s James Bond film. The Second World War changed many things. Humanity had to face what it had done and what it was capable of doing. Necessity proved once again a great motivator and for aviation, war in the West had focused all minds. Aeroplanes that were once fabric and cloth biplanes limited to 200 knots were now wind tunnel refined transonic creations of another world with rocket motors. America did what it always does. It backed itself fully, got a fully working helicopter, the Sikorsky R4, and the gyroplane was dead. In the UK, we revived the Sierra Auto Gyro Company at the end of the war, but it was now focused purely on the helicopter. The first project was the experimental W9, unique in that it utilised air from a variable pitch ducted fan driven by the main engine, a de Havilland Gypsy Queen. That provided a controllable efflux situated at the tail for your control. Next came the W11, the air horse, capable of carrying 26 passengers, powered by a single 1600 horsepower Rolls-Royce Merlin engine with shafts to three rotors and hydraulic controls. Two aircraft were built, but a crash during testing in 1950 not only killed all on board, including the world's most experienced rotary wing pilot of the time, Alan Marsh, but signalled the end of the entire company. All remaining projects were transferred to Saunders Row, including the Sierra W14 light helicopter, which was to become the quite successful Skeeter. Dr J.A.J. J. Bennett was at Ferry Aviation, focused upon the gyrodyne, before ultimately moving to the USA with work at Hiller. Hafner continued autorotative development during the war with his rotor buggy prototype. At war's end, he became head of the Bristol Aeroplane Company's new helicopter division and designed the excellent four-seat Sycamore. Heinrich Fokker initially worked for French manufacturer Sud Est on helicopter design before working for the Brazilian Air Force on this converter plane. For now, the gyroplane had been forgotten, along with those carefree years of private aviation and the basic dream of flight. Forgotten, but not lost, because in 1955, Eagle Benson first flew his B-7 model in America, and the sport gyroplane was born. It was powered by a 40 horsepower two-stroke motor with two-blade teetering rotors controlled by an overhead hanging stick and a twist grip throttle. Because the aircraft were sold as kits, the aircraft could be initially used as a rotor kite before saving for an engine and flying as a powered aircraft. One of the early adopters in the UK was Ken Wallace, who had bought a Benson kit and decided he could do better. His first gyroplane was the Beagle Wallace WA116. Wallace built this aircraft based on a Benson machine in 1957, but with a completely redesigned rotor system. At this time, aside from subtle engineering differences, all early kit gyroplanes looked the same. That was to change with an aerodynamically podded version of the WA116 that appeared in James Bond's You Only Live Twice in 1967. In America, Benson followed his B7 with his B8, both home built, but it captured the imagination of ordinary people, and by 1964, Benson was second only to Bell Helicopter in terms of rotorcraft on the US registry. As we'll see in part four, the huge popularity didn't end well. <laughs> 